Hey on there guys, this is Dale of Wombat Wargaming and I've had a question that's been rattling around in my head for a couple of weeks now. Which is better? Thousand Sons from the Compendium book or Warp Coven from the White Dwarf article? So well, how I'm going to solve this is I'm going to go through the pros and cons between both the factions. I'm not going to dive particularly deep into the specifics of each one individually. We're mostly going to be focusing on points of comparison to determine which would be better in any given situation. So with that in mind, let's dive on in. Okay then, so surprisingly we're not going to start right at the front with the kill team selection and the fire teams because I think in order to understand that first you need to know what the units are like in an individual basis. Uh, again, we're not going to go specifically through each and every one. Uh, if they're similar ones, we're just going to brush straight past them. But we're going to be pointing out specific differences between the two and comparing to see which is potentially or objectively better than the other one. So let's start with what the Thousand Suns are mostly known for. Rubric Marines. So then, let's start with the trusty, dusty Rubrics, your classic go-to marine infantry for Thousand Suns. Now, looking at between the two, between the Companion Team and the Warp Coven, they are basically the same, right down to the basic weapon profiles for both the Inferno Bolt Gun and Fists. It's the abilities where these two start to differ. A standard Rubric has a 5-up invulnerable save, and all is dust, where if you're saving throw against a ranged weapon with a normal da damage characteristic profile of 3 or less, you would get a 2-up armor save. The kicker, however, is for the Warp Coven rubric, because they get the exact same but with the additional added caveat that they cannot move more than three circle during their activation. Now, note, that doesn't just mean that you can't move and dash, that also limits you for charges, because it limits the amount you can move per turn. And because of this, I think, just on a pure unit-to-unit -unit basis, the Warp Coven rubric is objectively weaker than the standard rubric marine purely because of that movement. Um, say you were wanting to charge a guy just to lock someone up, or even if you wanted to move, dash, and then claim an objective with three APL, assuming you stood next to a sorcerer. You can't do that with Warp Coven. They are just slower, just flat out slower. That means they're less versatile, they're not as good for objective, they won't be able to get around terrain as well to get a good shot on people. Yeah, unfortunately the Warp Coven Rubik's just flat up come up short in comparison to their Compendium Brothers. Now, yes, yeah, sure, the counterpoint to that is the fact that uh, Warp Coven Rubrics, they get their additional plus one APL if they're standing within Square of a Sorcerer naturally. That just happens. With the Compendium team, you have to spend a uh, tactical ploy in order to make that happen. So that does seem better, right? Well, not really, because realistically speaking, what are you going to do with that plus one APL? You can't move and dash because you can't move forward and uh, circle. Uh, you can't fire twice, because as I'm going to later, uh, Warp Coven don't get malicious volleys, so your rubrics are not going to be double shooting compared to the Compendium guys. So yeah, you can give them that plus one APL, but realistically, what are you doing with it? It's way more limited in what these guys can do as opposed to the Compendium one. So again, I hold fast my point that the Warp Coven rubrics are objectively worse than the ones found in the Compendium. So another slight difference while we're on the subject of rubrics is how the Icon of Flame works. Now for the Compendium team, what the Warp uh, Icon of Flame allows to happen is that it lets your Sorcerer within Square perform a second art psychic action at no risk of failing the psychic power and dealing mortal wounds to himself. In the Warp Coven, however, it lets a Sorcerer within Pentagon do a free manifest psychic power action. Which sounds better, right? Well, I'm not so sure. Notice this free psychic action, and you can never perform the same action more than twice in an activation unless you have a rule that states otherwise, so you would have to proc the uh, sorcerer's ability that lets you do two psychic. On its own, it just lets you do the psychic for free. You would need to spend CP if you want to do two psychic, however. So, I'm not as convinced it's as powerful, just because in the compendium, that sorcerer, that one sorcerer on his own, can do two psychic actions, and he doesn't have to spend any CP for it, he can just do that. And yeah, the warp coven range on the rubric icon of flames is a little bit longer at Pentagon as opposed to square, but I'm not as convinced it's as versatile. It doesn't flat just give a second consequence free uh, round of psychic uh, attacks or abilities. So what about Zangors then? Well, uh, the warp coven loses the ability to take a twist break. Um, in the compendium team, he could be used, if say you took two uh, Zangor fire teams, you could take a twist break as your leader. Uh, the Warp Coven lose this guy and instead get him replaced with the Zangor Champion, who can take a Great Axe for general purpose smashing and a Great Blade for the rare occurrence when diving face first into multiple opponents. Honestly, though the Twist Bray isn't much of a loss from the standard Thousand Suns list, as he's basically a slightly better Zangor Warrior, the Champion, on the other hand, is an interesting pick, purely because both of his weapons are lethal 5 up, and he has the ability to fight twice in melee. 
Sure, he loses Relentless that Zango Fighters would have, which make him worth a moment of thought as to whether this guy would be better for you right now or not, or whether you should charge him in as a secondary option, as let a regular Zango Fighter go first. But the fight twice is a great for charging two models if one is heavily injured and you can guarantee a kill in one hit. It basically means that you'll be able to take out that wounded guy and then do a regular round of fighting against the other target. Uh, the Zangors with the banner and the horn work in basically exactly the same way between the Compendium and the uh, Warp Coven. So there's really nothing much going on here. The wording is slightly different on the horn, but overall it provides the exact same ability. Okay, so now we come to the real meat between these two teams, Sorcerers. Now, here's what's going to be potentially a hot take. If you're only planning on taking one Sorcerer, like maybe you've just got a box of rubrics and you only have the Aspiring Sorcerer that comes into that, I take the Compendium team over the Warp Coven. Sure, uh, Warp Coven do have access to the potentially three, but if you were going to run one, there are differences between the two that makes the standard Thousand Suns team one slightly better. Not only does he have access to four powers base over Warp Coven's three, but they are all way more universally useful than any one single Warp Coven discipline, leading to a much more flexible model in direct comparison between them. Not only that, but he can trigger a second psychic power without needing to spend any CP. Sure, it's a minor risk to himself, uh, fading a three up and getting three mortal wounds if he flubs it, but that's easily resolved by just standing next to an icon of flame. Oh, sure, he can take a plasma pistol as standard as well, and I'm sure being able to kick out an overcharged AP2 5-6 damage shot that hits on twos is no big there, I'm sure, I'm sure people won't mind that much, especially when one of his psychic powers gives him a free reroll against a certain target. Where the Warp Coven come into their own, though, is when you're running multiple sorcerers. Now, I could spend all day talking about the various boons of Zinch and psychic discipline combos that you could take, but that's a topic that requires its own video. It's a bit too deep to cover for this one just now. So suffice to say, the Warp Coven sorcerers get a hugely in-depth amount of buffs and powers to customise your sorcerers with. And when some of the equipment and tactics let you cross over into multiple disciplines, then you're really creating some nasty situations for your opponent to deal with. So then, in summary, if you're only able or willing to take a single Sorcerer, I strongly recommend taking the Compendium team over the Warp Coven. He's just flat better, in my opinion. He has access to more usable powers, he can do them twice for free. Yeah, I think he's better in a straight-up one-on-one fight against a Warp Coven Sorcerer. But the Warp Coven can take three of them, and then you get into some really nasty combo situations where you can have one of each discipline, and they've all got different boons of Zinch, and... They all do their own various nasty, unique, special things that can really mess with your opponent. So if you're taking more than one Sorcerer, Warp Coven is the way to go. Okay then, so let's have a look at strategic and tactical ploys. And we're just going to drop the first bombshell from Orbit. Um, Warp Coven don't get malicious volleys. They, they just don't. Um, what this means is for standard rubrics in a Compendium Thousand Suns team, when they're using bolt weaponry of any kind, so your Inferno Bolt Gun or Bolt Pistol, uh, if they don't perform a fight action, then they can do two shoot actions instead, which just flat out doubles the damage output of your rubrics. The Warp Coven equivalent is frankly not as good. Sure, it's more versatile in that you can do two fight actions if you don't shoot, but you'll mostly be wanting to keep your sorcerers at something of a distance in order to keep them alive. The real kicker though is this only applies to sorcerers, not marines in general. So there's no double shooting for Warp Coven rubrics at all. Not only that, but you also have to select a different weapon to shoot with when you do it. So, no double doom bolts or bolt pistol attacks, it must be a different weapon each time. Which sucks when you're out of bolt pistol range and each discipline only has access to one ranged attack. Next for Thousand Suns is the Sorceress Automata, which gives each friendly rubric within square of your sorcerer an extra APL. And this is, to be blunt, great, as it makes your rubrics behave like actual marines for a turn and all the good things that come along with that. Sure, the Warp Coven do get a similar ability for free on their Sorcerer, but it's actually slightly weaker as they can only do it once per turn. Less of an issue if you have as many Sorcerers as you do Rubrics, but if you've only got one or two Sorcerers, then you may find yourselves running out of APL to give to your Dusty Boys. Uh, the last strategic play for the Thousand Suns is Inhuman Savagery, which helps your Zangors by letting them turn a miss in melee into a hit, but only if they charge first and already scored two hits already. Uh, I'd argue that the Warp Coven equivalent is actually better here, 
in the fact that Savage Herd doesn't need you to charge or land any hits, it just lets your Zangors keep a hit without rolling for it. Or, even better, if they're supported by another Zangor, they get a free crit instead. Now for the psychic action that all Warp Coven gets, it just simply lets all sorcerers do two psychic actions. Note, however, that you would still need to proc uh, Exalted Astartes as well if you're planning on doing multiple ranged attacks, but that said, it's a great way to get a buff or debuff off on its own before attacking a target with something else. Next is Slow and Purposeful, which gives rubrics that have not moved a reroll of their choice, for example, rerolling all dice results of one, or two, your choice. Uh, the only real application for this, I think, is on the Soul Reaper cannon that's got a good vantage point. For nearly every other situation, you want your models to be moving about the board to complete objectives, which would cancel out the effect of this tactic, unless you specifically choose to shoot before you move. Note how the wording allows for some sequencing play here. When you shoot the first action, you get the buff because you haven't moved this turning point yet, and then you move because it doesn't matter, you weren't shooting twice anyway. It doesn't say that you cannot shoot and move in the same turn. It is a very specific difference. Uh, since we're talking ploys as well, let's go straight into the tactical ones. Uh, for Thousand Suns, Treasure Hunter is a fantastic one if you brought Zangles, since they can do all the heavy objective play lifting and still get more done besides. Sorcerer's Focus is basically the Icon of Flame ability if you didn't bring one or are too far away from him to activate, so nothing too special here. And finally, Infernal Fusillade lets you fire again if you didn't cause any wounds. Note, that's wounds and not hits. So say your Soul Reaper lands some shots but they get lucky and pass all their armor saves, or an Orc Commando procs just a scratch, then you could do this to light them up again. Uh, the Warp Coven tactical ploys, however, have a bit more room to play around with, since on paper they don't sound as basically strong, but there's a lot of potential with these for some nasty trickery. Capricious Plan is a personal favourite. It lets a sorcerer do a dash after its activation and then flip its order. Doesn't sound too great initially until you consider a turn where you move up, shoot twice with Exalted Astartes, then dash into cover and or change your order to conceal so you don't get any return fire. In my opinion, you always want at least one CP a turn for this, just for this ability alone. Psychic Cabal lets you borrow a friendly sorcerer within Pentagon Psychic Discipline for a single power. Useful in certain situations, but it does rely a lot on having the right guys in the right place at the right time. So it's very situational, but it can get you out of a jam by letting the guy heal or doom bolt or get rerolls when they otherwise shouldn't be able to. Mutant Herd lets you activate another Zangor after your current one, so effectively you can get two activations one after the other. Very handy in getting Zangors up into a melee where they support each other, getting guys out of the line of fire, and for potentially reducing the amount of overwatch shots your opponent would otherwise have in a turn. Finally, Schemes of Change is basically a get out of an undoable secondary objective card. The issue being that the one you replace it with is random, and in all likelihood is one that you already discarded at the start of the game for a reason. Still useful though, uh, such as when I took the recon objective to mark the enemy leader at range, but the enemy leader ended up killing themselves in melee against me before I could do that. Next we come to equipment, and frankly I think the compendium team just has the warp coven flat out beat here. The all C and I is especially good for a shooting rubric team, as it lets you deal your damage out thick and fast before your opponent can react, whilst also meaning that you will get to overwatch actions faster and then be able to kick out even more shots that turn. Runic Ward is also great at keeping your guys alive by helping you reduce incoming damage with an armour or critical save you might not have gotten otherwise. And Treasure Trinket on the Zangors is a no-brainer, as for just a, it's just a free CP for the game, which of course is highly useful. For Warp Coven though, high cap mags are not the best, as your Zangors shouldn't really be shooting in the first place, and it's expensive for rubrics. The Occult Talisman gives you a 5 up feel no pain, which would be amazing, if it didn't only apply when taking damage from a psychic attack, which is only ever going to happen in mirror matches at this point in Kill Team's life cycle. Sorcerer Scroll lets you have access to a one use only psychic power from another discipline, which is great and frankly the only auto take on the list, but it's very expensive and only one sorcerer can have it, so choose wisely who gets it and what it comes with. Uh, Arcane Robes are straight damage reduction if you took a critical by making it inflict normal damage instead. But note it says damage, not effect. So if any mortal wounds that a certain critical would do will still go through, since the damage difference between most hits and crits is only one point anyway, it's likely not going to do that much to keep you alive. 
One final thing we need to consider between the two is that Warp Coven get access to specific secondary objectives which you can shuffle into your own deck, and we'll have a quick breeze through those now. Scry Secret nets you a VP if a sorcerer performs one AP Scry Secret action within Pentagon of a model containing a secret. If your sorcerer did this and is still alive at the end of the match, you get another victory point. Frankly, I hate this one for two reasons. One, your opponent is the one who picks which of his models has the secret, so can screen you from him all game. And two, you can absolutely guarantee that your sorcerers are going to be the highest priority targets for your opponent. It is a very rare occasion where even one of them will survive the entire match. Sorcerer's Ritual is great if you need to babysit an objective all game anyway. And again, only sorcerers can do the action. The objective must either be at the centre of the map or an objective more than Pentagon from your drop zone. And you can't do it if you have an enemy within circle of you. Oh yeah, and you need to do it twice to get a victory point and three points to, times to max the objective. Which, quite frankly, is a tall order, especially when there are far more pressing things for your sorcerers to be doing, and an opponent moving within circle of you can stop you achieving a victory point. Grand Plan is probably the best of the three, but by no means an easy one. Your opponent picks one of his models and an objective marker more than Pentagon from the board edge. If you kill that specific model, you get a VP. Same if you hold the objective for any one turn. Again, the problem with this tack op is that it gives a lot of room for your opponent to make life difficult for you. But if you planned on storming the board anyway, it's the most achievable of the three in my opinion. So now that we know the points of difference between the Compendium team and Warp Cover, we can start to draft some ideal lists that play into what either faction does. So for Standard Thousand Suns, I would personally recommend either two Rubric Fire teams for pure shooting power, or a combined arms approach of one Rubric and one Zangor Fire team if there are a lot of objectives on the board up for grabs. Everything this faction has is pointing towards a shooting build, where your Sorcerer is the supporting linchpin that keeps your Rubrics up and standing, so the Rubrics guard your Sorcerer, and you hurry towards your Overwatch shots as fast as possible to deal maximum damage to the opponent. Alternatively, by sacrificing just two Rubrics, you gain access to half a dozen Zangors, who can run about the place capping objectives and engaging in the melee that your Rubrics would otherwise be ill-suited to. Frankly, this is a very strong and nasty build to face against for some teams. AP1 bolt guns, fired potentially three times per turn with Overwatch and Malicious Volleys, is a horrific amount of shooting power to try and face down, especially if your weapons are three damage or less and so activate the All is Dust ability. An All Rubik squad is vulnerable to melee, however, and has to stick close together to really work, and thus lacks board control, which is where the combined arms approach with the Zangors is good to have in your back pocket. The Warp Coven, conversely, focus entirely on what the individual sorcerers can bring to the table. That said, your kill team selection is far more flexible, due to being locked into a sorcerer leader but having 10 points to select operatives with, where marines or sorcerers cost 2 points each. I would suggest always taking at least 2 sorcerers, and potentially even max out to 3 depending on your situation. But also, if you think you can handle the astounding amount of special rules that you would have to do in the instance of taking three sorcerers. From there, I would just fill up the rest of the list with Zangors, and maybe a Soul Reaper Cannon if you've got a good vantage point within easy reach. The Warp Coven Rubik Marines are objectively weaker than those found in the standard Thousand Suns. The backbone of this team is about all the funky warp nonsense that sorcerers can bring to the table, backed up by a horde of Zangors with Relentless on their blades. Where your Rubik's may be worse for your team, your Zangors are actually a little bit better. So I'd rely way more on them tying up opponents in combat than trying to shoot them down with Rubik's. Again, going into the Psychic Powers, Boons of Zeech and all those really nasty combinations that those could make would take far too long. And I plan to make a faction focused video to deal with those later down the line. But some advice I would give here on Sorcerers is always take the one that can fly. Um, I consider the warp fire discipline for the not for the range attack, but for giving rerolls and teleporting a Soul Reaper cannon somewhere really annoying for your opponents. And both the mutant appendage and time walker for being strong picks, both for objective play and melee smashing respectively. So ultimately, then returning to my initial question, is it stronger to run Thousand Suns as a compendium team or as the warp coven? Now I think I've built a pretty strong case here to show that actually they have their own plus and downsides. Like the kill team consensus as a whole at the moment is that the teams found in the Octaria set and Charnath and the White Dwarf articles are objectively better than those found in the Compendium. And I don't think that's specifically the case here. 
If you want to pound your opponents at range with volley after volley of AP1 Inferno bolt gun fire, the Thousand Suns Compendium team is the way to go. It's a very simple but very effective way to play them, and unless your opponent can keep out of your line of fire, they are going to have a struggle to take you down. That said, however, if, like a true servant of the Architect of Fate, you want to have as many potential options open to you as possible, Warp Coven may be the way to go. Surprisingly, they favour melee over range, with better supporting powers for your Zangors, but also have the option to bring a Soul Reaper Cannon for when you've got a good firing point to take advantage of. Obviously, however, the real powerhouse lies within your Sorcerers. It is an extremely high skill ceiling team. Having so many options open to you leaves so many pitfalls for you to fall into before you even start the match, as this team lives or dies based on if you bought the right tools for the job. Trying to keep track of all the unique things that your sorcerers can do is mind-boggling at times, and until you get familiar with them, I can guarantee you will mess up who has what powers, or where they need to be, or who should have activated first. If you like your games of Kill Team to be simple, avoid Warp Coven at all costs. They are not a team that rewards basic play and strategy. But if you can twist fate, just so, that all your abilities line up into one fantastical scheme, then they can be a true force to be reckoned with. So, is one team objectively better than the other? I don't think so. One can outshoot the other one, and one can outmaneuver and outplay with board control and get quite nasty in melee, so I think it really depends on what you want your team to do and how you like playing kill teams. If you like keeping it simple, Compendium is the way to go just for simplicity and shooting sakes. But if you really want to get into the meat and just have a completely customizable team to bring the right tools for any situation, Warp Coven is something to consider for you. But again, it is entirely up to the player in this instance. I don't believe that one of these teams is objectively stronger than the other one. What I do hope, however, is that you've enjoyed this video breakdown of the differences between the Compendium Thousand Suns and the Warp Coven. If you've got any experiences with either of these teams and would like to share them, feel free to leave them down in the comment section below. And until next time, this has been Dale of Wombat Wargaming.